conflict or moral failure. 94% of ministers feel under pressure to have a perfect family. 80% of ministers believe that pastoral ministry affects their families negatively. 75% of ministers report severe stress causing anguish, worry, bewilderment, anger, depression, fear, and alienation. 70% of ministers don't have any close friends. 50% of pastors' wives say that they have no close friends. 45% of pastors say that they have experienced depression or burnout to the extent they need to take time off from ministry. 40% of pastors are suffering from burnout, frantic schedules, and or unrealistic expectations, and that is also true of pastors' wife, 47% of them. 20% of pastors have struggled with an addiction in ministry. So I don't want to teach this workshop from the point of view that I have it all together, and we know as believers of Jesus Christ that we need the gospel, that no one is always having a healthy personal walk with the Lord. We uh, pray for that. We want that. But we, um, we need to understand that we need God's grace. So what does it mean to, to be healthy? What does it look like to have a personal, healthy walk with the Lord? Let's read out Psalm 1 in verse 3. He, the righteous, will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, by which, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. So the first principle I want to share with you is this. For a healthy personal walk with Christ, we need a season of fruitfulness. There needs to be the principle of fruitfulness in our lives. Notice that in, in the passage about this tree, it talks about that yields its fruit in its season. So a tree has a season where it's bearing fruits. A healthy tree is bearing fruits. In John 15, 16, Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you will go and bear fruits. Now, growing and bearing fruits take place in the soil of worship. So when we talk about fruitfulness, we're talking about worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. All we are either stands or falls in worship, what we worship. So if we try to find our identity in ministry or in our ministry position, then we would quickly find out that ministry position won't satisfy our souls and won't give us rest. In Matthew 22, we read when uh, Jesus answered the question, what is the first and great commandment? He answers with, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And he then follows with this, on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So, Intimacy with God, worshiping God, starts there. Fruitfulness starts with worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, there's a quote from Paul Tripp that says, worship is not just something you occasionally do, it's the foundation of who you are. So only when worship is ruling our hearts, we will set everything else in its rightful place. Because God wants our hearts. So when we are talking about a healthy personal walk with the Lord Jesus, it has to begin with the principle of worship. Our spiritual health flows from that relationship with the Lord. In John 15, 5 says, I am divine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears how much? Much fruits. For apart from me, 
you can do nothing. So the Christian life is a supernatural life. So therefore, our spiritual growth and health is a fruit of worship. I always tell my church that allow the time in the word, allow the time when you're praying to God, when you are serving in ministry at the church, allow that time to deepen your relationship with the Lord. But just to do a check box, but actually to have intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. So worship, when we talk about bearing fruits and being fruitful, is a call to truly worship God. And we worship God when we are pursuing faithfulness. So pursue faithfulness. We are stewards of a moment. God has entrusted you with season of life, with specific amount of years, with a ministry position or opportunity in your church so we, are, we have been called to be faithful to Christ. So we worship Christ as we pursue faithfulness to Christ. 1 Corinthians 4, verses 1 and 2 says, this is how one should regard us, and I love this. This is how we, we should uh, see ourselves and regard ourselves as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of the stewards that they be found faithful. Robert Murray said, it is no great talent that God blesses so much as great likeness to Jesus. And you have been hearing this throughout the conference. It is about character, pursuing the Lord. It's understanding who we are in light of who God is. I loved yesterday when uh, Robbie was giving the illustration how we ought to uh, uh, come to the pulpit, which is actually dragging ourselves, crawling to the pulpit, knowing that no one is sufficient to teach the word, to preach the word, to do ministry, that we have been called to do it from that standpoint of stewardship, pursuing faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Fruitfulness is birth out of faithfulness. When you pursue faithfulness, fruitfulness will come out of that because apart from him, we can do nothing. So we have not been called to be, to produce fruit in of ourselves, but actually to abide in Christ as we, as we abide in him, then he is bearing fruits in us and through us. I always tell the words of, I tell myself the words of um, John 19, the last words of Jesus on the cross. Jesus said, it is finished. Meaning that we served in ministry, us follow, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. In our churches, we serve the Lord from the vantage point of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is freeing when we know that we don't have to prove ourselves that we are serving from this, the vintage point of that Jesus did it all. He completed the work. That God is more interested in our hearts than in our performance. He wants us to worship him, to pursue faithfulness, meaning going to the office when you don't feel like going to the office. Being patient with your people when their performance was not their best. It means loving your wife even when at that moment you might not feel like loving her. Pursuing faithfulness, worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Because to be a Christian is to say, I rest not on my works, but his. I rest on the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So a healthy personal walk with the Lord Jesus Christ starts with being faithful to him, with worshiping him. And as we pursue faithfulness, he will 
produce fruit in us as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I love the picture of Psalm 1, that Psalm 1 um, pictures this tree that is planted by streams of water and in and, and, uh, and the life of a tree, you know that the tree has a season to bear fruits, but also that tree needs to be pruned. In order to grow, in order to be healthy, and in order to bear more fruits, there's the principle of pruning. So for a healthy person to walk with the Lord, Jesus, the principle number two is pruning. In John 15, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it may bear more fruits. So there's a season to be pruned by the Lord Jesus Christ as we pursue him, as we pursue faithfulness, as, as we are worshiping him, even from weakness, as we have learned, and even in the middle of trials, as we are pursuing him, he is pruning us And pruning takes place, one of the best places that pruning takes place is in community, in community. So when we're talking about pruning, when we're talking about having a person to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that we have been saved and we have been placed in Christ's body. So don't isolate your, yourself. To have a healthy personal walk, you need to be in community, walking with other, other believers. We are leaders uh, always, and how many of you are in a, in a ministry position right now? How many of you are leading in a ministry? Okay, some of you. Okay. How many of you are involved in a, at some capacity at church? Okay, some of you. So you're pouring into other people, you're uh, giving of your time, of your talents, of your resources to serve the body of Christ. And as we do that, if we isolate ourselves, then we will be missing the ministry of the body of Christ. So we need to allow the body of Christ to minister to us. There's a danger of being in community, but not walking with the community. You can be in a church, you can be actually in a small group, but not walking with the people in the small group. So we need to be intentional. We need to uh, seek to be transparent. When they're asking questions in small group, we need to open up our hearts and allow other people to see who we truly are and allow them to speak into our lives. We need mentors and friends. We need um, people who speak true into our lives. We need to, to listen to other people. We need uh, people that would listen to us, that would encourage us, we need to spend time in commun com communion with other people that love us, that would have meaningful conversation with us at the heart level, that pruning will take place when people get to know you and when you get to know other people that will be protecting you, that will be loving you, that will be pouring into your life. So when you're discouraged, they will be they'll, you'll be encouraged by them. If God is calling you to a healthy person to walk with the Lord, I believe he is because it is his will, our sanctification, he will call people to walk alongside us. We're part of a body. We're part of a, a group of believers. We need um, honest feedback. We need feedback in order to be sanctified. We need our character to be shaped by the Lord Jesus. Why? Because character affects our walk with the Lord. And that's the idea with mirrors. Why do we have mirrors? Because we actually don't know how we look like. Um, actually, when we, we um, see the human senses, our eyes, they are um, 
in a way, programmed to, to, to see what is on the outside. When we see our ears, we are uh, actually hearing what's always, what they're designed to, to see what's happening on the outside. Our nose, our senses are designed to be aware of the outside. So we need other people, like mirrors, that will be speaking into us, that would help us to see how we truly are so we can become aware of what's happening in our lives. Because we won't change until we know that we need to change. So we need that type of relationships where good and honest conversations are taking place making us aware of things that need to be pruned. And when I talk about pruning, when we have all the people in our lives and we're walking with people, um, pruning would actually take place when you get to the point of repentance. Because you may know what's happening in your life, you might know the things that needs to be changed, but if you don't repent, pruning is not gonna take place. So we're walking in community we're walking in community to be sanctified. We're walking in community to, so the Lord will prune those things in our lives that needs to go away, that needs to be pruned. And I love 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God wants us to walk in community. You won't have a healthy, personal walk if you are isolated. When God created men, he said, it is not good that he is alone. So it is not good that you are walking alone. You need other people, other members of the body of Christ for a healthy, personal walk with him. I say it, um, to my church often that church is a beautiful mess. True or false? That's church. But we should be for one another. We should love one another. We should be encouraging one another. Doing whatever we can to see people having a healthy personal walk with Christ. Because at the end, we're striving for God's glory. At the end, we want Christ to be magnified. At the end, we want him to be glorified and served and followed. That's what we're aiming for. Not to, for people to say, wow, that person is amazing, because we are not. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I love tennis. I mean, I don't know how to play tennis, but I love watching tennis. And there's a, a player that I, that I admire. He's one of the best in the world, uh, Nadal. He's from Spain. And this guy, uh, when he's playing tennis, it's very interesting that all the tennis players have a box. And in this box, you always see his wife, his parents, his coach. You will see his doctor, his barber, his chef. Like, everyone is in that box. And you see that professional athletes have a team around them. But then you look at Christians and they're walking by themselves. So to have a healthy, personal walk with the Lord, we need community. We need to be seeking community. It is no natural for us to be walking in community. It is easier to be by ourselves, right? So we need to be intentionally walk in community, walk with other believers. Um, in my house, I'm the one in charge to put up the Christmas lights. So every year I put up the Christmas lights, and then at the end of the season, I will take them down. So usually when you take down the Christmas lights, you put them away, and then next Christmas arrive, and you're ready to put the Christmas light up again, you realize that all those Christmas lights are entangled. They're just a mess. So there's always the temptation to get the Christmas lights and just throw them away and go buy new ones, right? Have you done that before? <laughs> so it is easier just to 
throw the Christmas lights away and go buy new ones, but we know that it's, that's not wise because we're spending more than we should be spending. So walking in community, it's important. We know that it's easier to um, just... Be by ourselves, but we know that that is not wise. The only way you'll be healthy is by having other people around you, other people that will love you, that will speak um, truth to your life. Um, when we tell the story of our church plants, it's, it's been almost six years since we started the core group. We started the code group in February um, 2014, and then we launched the church in the fall of that same year. Um, so when we tell the story of our church in Miami, we always say that, number one, it's God's story. We know that it's him edifying his church, building his church. But number two, we always say that it's the story of many people, because we know that we have made it thus far because of many people that were willing to sacrifice much to love, to give, to serve. And it's also true in the Christian life. As we walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to embrace the calling that in order to be healthy, yes, we need to be um, worshiping fruitfulness, but also we need to be pruned. And that pruning will take place in community with other believers that we won't make it far if we are by ourselves. So those two principles are key for a healthy person to walk. So that first principle of fruitfulness that is birthed out of worship and the second principle of pruning that takes place in community. So my third principle is resting. So you see a tree, and in Psalm 1, we read that that tree is firmly planted by streams of water, standing there, rooted in good soil, next to streams of water. So for a healthy person to walk, there's also a season of rest. And that includes physical rests and also spiritual rests. Both are needed. One of the biggest issues that we have in our society is that we know how to work, right? We work hard. We are good at multitasking. But we have a big problem when it comes to resting. We don't know how to say no to people. We're always going. And if we don't know how to say no to people we become slave of what people have to say. We become slave of our own needs and insecurities. We become slave of our own family expectations. We become a slave of our own company because we don't know how to say no. But resting well, yeah, definitely is more than not working. Um, resting well, we're talking about uh, spiritual rests, Abiding in the Lord. Rest is a God-ordained recharge of our worship. So pointing back to the first principle, to worship. We rest to worship. So a day to focus on refueling our worship. Because worship would in turn be obedience. And Jeremiah 6.16 says, Thus says the Lord, stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient path where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. So rest is spiritual. Resting is intentional. And if you're casual about it, then it won't happen. Um, let, me, let me take just a, just a moment and... and um, give you a few examples of how we rest. Um, so when we're talking about rest or a Sabbath day, we're talking about on that day, doing something that you normally don't do. So if you, if you work at an office, at a desk, when you get home, don't sit in front of the computer. 
So if you're active all day, when you get home, open up a book and read. Something that has to do with admiring and enjoying creation. Remember, because when we talk about resting, the principle of resting for a healthy person to walk, we're talking about refueling our worship of Jesus Christ. Things that would remind of remind us of the creation and the glory of the Lord that is revealed in creation. Another example would be to take time to remind yourself of who you are in Christ. Since we're always going and going and going, sometimes we forget who we are. So rest in taking time through scriptures, through the word, so you can remember who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. To worship. Start your day with worship. Worship the Lord. Another thing you can do to rest is be inactive. You know, it's okay to someday do nothing. At church, um, when I finish preaching, um, sometimes I hear people asking me, oh, what are you doing tomorrow? Nothing. It's okay to say nothing. You're doing nothing tomorrow because you want to be refueled. There are days where, when we need to say we're doing nothing. Some people at home find it hard to be off from work, right? In the era of technology, we have cell phones, computers, tablets, we have, you name it. We have everything. And that means that we can work from anywhere, right? So we work from everywhere because of technology. And the ability to rest, to deeply rest, is no natural. It's no simple. It takes discipline, it takes practice, And true rest is found at the spiritual level. Yes, we need physical rest, but our souls would rest at the spiritual level. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 8, for the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. True rest is found in a person, and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Rest is to be utterly satisfied with what has been done. It's interesting when you read the account of Genesis, you see that when God finished creation, he rested, right? What does that mean? Does it mean that he was tired? Does it mean that God was tired in the process of creating? It means that he was utterly, complete satisfy with what he had done. So when we are talking about resting, having a healthy person to walk, we're talking about being satisfied in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That it is okay that you don't have it all under control. That it is okay that that is pending. Because we have to trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, that he has provided the rest we needed and craved. Only when we rest on what he has done, that's when we serve freely. That's when we love our wives. That's when we serve our kids. From the perspective that, you know what? The Lord has completed the work Only in Jesus we find rest. Only in Jesus our souls are satisfied. When we look at the cross, we learn that all the work that was needed has been done. Now we can rest. We're going uh, through the book of John right now in our church, and I love how um, John the Baptist said that he was just a voice and pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ, saying he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Like he is the one. In him, true rest, satisfying rest is found. So a healthy person to walk with 
the Lord Jesus, um, when, when we said about a healthy person to walk, um, the focus is not about us saying that we have it all together, but that we are worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we make it all about us, we have lost track of what's really important. What's really important is to magnify the Lord. Know that the blessed man of someone, when you read someone, that blessed man is the Lord Jesus Christ. That we can find rest in him. That Jesus is the blessed man that never walked in the counsel of the wicked. But on your behalf, for your justification, he walked a perfect life to fulfill the demands of the law, the requirements of the law. Jesus is the tree planted by streams of water that yielded fruit in the right season. All that he did prospered. He yielded salvation for many sinners to be justified and his work continues to prosper. Just to listen what God is doing in the GCC, it's incredible. That gives testimony of the work of the Lord that continues to prosper, that his church continues to be edified and sanctified, that Jesus is the perfect righteousness that has been imputed to you and to me, that we belong to the Father, that we are righteous in the eyes of God because he is that righteous man. So a healthy personal walk starts with worship. Fruitfulness is birth out of faithfulness to worship in him, to stand in firm in the Lord, to trust him. Like Robbie was saying that as we know this hope, this glorious hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what, it, what we're going through, we can look back to the hope and say, we know that we can stand firm in him because the work that he has begun in us, he will complete it. There's a poem by um, Paul Tripp. It's, it's titled, Rest. Let me read it to you, and then I finish with a verse. Rest, a faint dream for many, a treasure commodity in a fallen world, a thing so needed yet so easily interrupted. The garden was a place of rest. No violence in creation, no weed or thorn, no cleft between God and men, no reason to hide, no cause of for fear, no need unmet, no grief to face. Bright sun, pure love, unfettered peace, unstained beauty, men and God, worship and love. But a voice interrupted the rest. Strategies of death, words of deceit, actions of rebellion, Fingers of blame, expulsion from the garden, judgment and death. Rest interrupted, rest shadow. So we wait for the Lord. His grace strengthens, his presence comforts, his promises assure, his power activates and his rule guarantees that someday rest, real rest, pure rest, eternal rest, will reign once more. No violence in creation, no weed or thorn, no cleft between God and men, no reason to hide, no cause for fear, no need unmet, no grief to face between God and men. Yes, rest, true rest, will live again and last forever. So we wait for the Lord to restore us to that place. Bright sun, Pure love, unfettered peace, unstained beauty, God and men together forever. Until that day, with hearts that are strong and hope that is undeemed and joy that embraces the future, we wait for the Lord. Come to me, said Jesus. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So true rest Real rest is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And that healthy personal walk is fueled by worship as we pursue the Lord, as we are walking in community and being pruned by the Holy Spirit as he is leading us to repentance and as we also rest in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to um, recommend three books that has been hel uh, helpful to me. The first one is Zeal Without Burnout. It uh, talks about how to have a sustainable sacrifice. Because we know that we have been called to be a living sacrifice, Romans 12, 1 and 2. So how do we have a sustainable sacrifice? How do we have a, a personal healthy walk? That is a great book that I recommend. Um, there's also a great book called A Gospel Primer for Christians. It's seeing everything through the lens of the gospel, speaking the gospel to you on a daily basis. And the third book is called Extravagant Grace. Um, it's a great book as well. It's similar to uh, Standing Firm in Weakness. So those three books are been a, has been a blessing to, to me, to my wife. So I highly recommend those. Um, let me pray for us, and then uh, I'll be here. So if you have any questions, you can come forward and we can talk. Uh, Father, we, um, we thank you that in Jesus we find our identity, that real rest, true rest, spiritual rest, soul-satisfying rest is found in the completed work of your son, Jesus. Lord, we want to be faithful. That's our hearts. Now, many of us are here in this workshop because we know, Lord, that apart from you, we can do nothing we grow weary, we tend to, to get tired, to get discouraged. We, we uh, deal with temptations of giving up, but we know, Lord, as we worship you, as we are standing firm in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, as we pursue faithfulness, as we are in you, Lord, you will strengthen us because our power is found in you. Our strength is found in you. We make it, Lord, to the end because you are faithful. And Lord, I pray that you, it would be an encouragement to my brothers and sisters here to be reminded, Lord, that you have called them, that you will sustain them, and that you will sanctify them, Lord, that you will bear much fruits. We believe, Lord, that you have called us your people, to bear much fruits for your glory. So I pray to, for blessings, Lord, for my brothers and sisters, and that, Lord, as they walk in community, they will be encouraged and also develop a healthy personal walk with you, O oh Lord Jesus. I pray this in your name. Amen.